In this video, we're going to do a couple of extra examples of finding the stationary matrix for a regular Markov chain. So, for the first example, suppose a company uses records to classify customers' experiences as happy, adequate, or dissatisfied. Okay, so each time a customer visits the store, their status could change, and the store records indicate the following pattern. Okay, so happy, adequate, and dissatisfied, those are going to be our states. Okay, so we have three states. 90% um, of happy customers remain happy, while 10% become adequate. 20% uh, of adequate customers become happy, while 10% become dissatisfied. And 20% of dissatisfied become adequate, um, but all others remain dissatisfied. So in the long run, what's the probability a random customer is dissatisfied? Okay, so this statement in the long run, okay, this is telling me that I want um, the stationary matrix. Okay, so after a long number, a long period of time, so after k um, steps for a large k, uh, the system, if it's regular, will approach a stationary matrix. Um, so we're in order to tell what happens in the long run, we're hoping that it's regular because that's the only way we know, and we want to find the stationary matrix because that tells us what the state matrices will approach as the number of states gets big. Um, so, we are going to start by making our transition matrix. So, remember I said the states were happy, adequate, and dissatisfied. Okay, so I'm going to call it that H, A, and D. Okay, I'm going to use that order as well. So, our transition matrix is going to be a 3 by 3 where the states are labeled H, A, D, H, A, D. Okay, now the bullet points here tell us how the customers can change from one state to another. So the first bullet is from the happy state, what could happen? Okay, so that's going to be row one. So 90% of happy customers remain happy. So that means that this spot here is going to be 0.9, 90%. 10% become adequate, and none of them become dissatisfied because that's already 100%. Okay, of adequate, 20% become happy, 10% um, become dissatisfied, which leaves 70% to remain adequate. And for dissatisfied, 20% become adequate, all the rest, so that's 80% remain dissatisfied, and none of them switch directly to happy. <clears throat> so, that is our transition matrix. Now, what we want to do first is check that it's regular. Because it has zeros, um, we're not sure at the get-go. Okay, so we're going to use our stars and zeros method to check if it's regular. So, everywhere there's a positive number, I'm going to put a star. And where the zeros are, I'm going to leave a zero. Okay, so that's the form of p, and I want to I want to look at p squared. So I'm going to multiply these two together. Okay, so this is the form of p times the form of p. Okay, so when I do this, I'm going to take this row and this column. Notice that I'm going to hit, in fact, two sets of stars. So I'm going to have a star times a star. Um, plus a star times a star, plus zero times zero, which is zero. So remember, star times a star is a star. Um, zero times anything is zero. And when you add, you just need at least one star in order to get a star. So when I take row one and column two, column two is all stars. I'm definitely going to hit some stars. So again, I'm going to have star plus star plus zero. And the third column, I'm going to have 0 plus star plus 0. Okay, now I want to do the same thing for row 2. Now it's all stars. So I can immediately see, because each of the columns has a star, that I'm going to match with one of these stars here. But to write it out, I'm going to have a star plus a star plus a 0. 
And this is going to be three stars added together. And then I'm going to have a zero plus a star plus a star. And when I do row three, I'm going to have zero plus star plus zero. And then zero plus star plus star. And then zero plus star plus, oops, plus. Now that looks like a star. Okay, plus star. So in each of these, maybe I can fit this in here. In each of these entries, okay, I have a, a star in at least in each one. So that means that I'm going to have a star in each place. Okay, which means that P squared has all positive entries, which means that P is regular. Okay, which means that our Markov chain, I'm going to call it MC, is a regular uh, Markov chain. Okay, so that means that there is a stationary matrix. So there is a stationary uh, matrix S, and I'm going to call it the entries X, Y, and Z. If you want to use S1, S2, S3, you can do that as well. So, um, the stationary matrix, so we must have um, S times P equal to S. So, when, remember when I try, when I multiply by the transition matrix, that moves me to the next state. Okay, so this should be the next state is actually the same as the state I was in. That's the definition for a stationary matrix. So, that means that X, Y, Z times our P, which is 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.1, 0, 0.2, and 0.8. That should equal X, Y, and Z. Okay, the same thing. So when I actually do this multiplication, I'm going to get, so you have to do the rows. So this row times this column, that's going to give me this entry here. So that's going to be 0.9x plus 0.2y and 0z. Okay, and then I'm going to have 0.1x plus 0.7y plus 0.2z. And then for the last entry, I'm going to have no x, so 0.1y plus 0.8z. Let me just do the highlighter here. So yellow, so that's that one. And then if I take that times that one, I get this, okay? Now that should be equal to S itself. So that's X, Y, Z. So that means that I need each of these entries to be equal. Okay, so that's going to give me three equations. Okay, so maybe I can fit them in here. So I'm going to have 0.9x plus 0.2y, that should equal x. 0.1x plus 0.7y plus 0.2z, that should equal y. And 0.1y plus 0.8z should equal z. Okay, so I get these three equations. Now remember, our method allows us to get rid of one of them, okay? I think I'm going to remove this middle one because it has the most number of variables, okay? But we have to add in the equation x plus y plus z equal to 1, okay? Remember that special equation has to go in. So we can get rid of one of the bad ones, but we have to add in um, this nice one. Now, I also, I'm going to use Gauss-Jordan to solve this, I think. Um, so I need to put all the variables on one side. So notice that I still have X and Z over here in this, these two equations. So that means I'm going to subtract X on both sides so that that goes away. And I'm going to subtract Z on both sides so that goes away. So I'm going to have zeros there on those ones. So what we want to do is we want to solve the system. So I'm going to write the nice equation at the top. Okay, now um, this equation here I have 0.9x minus x, so that's going to be negative 0.1x plus 0.2y, and that's going to equal 0. 
I should have maybe lined this up a bit better. Let me just space them out a bit more. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then in the third equation here, uh, I have 0.8z minus z, so that's going to be negative 0.2z. So I have 0.1y minus 0.2z, and that should equal 0. Okay, so now I've rewritten it. Notice that my variables line up. Oops. Okay, so the x's, the y's, the z's, the equals, okay, and then the numbers. So now I can put it into my matrix if I'm going to use Gauss-Jordan method, which I am going to here. So my row one is going to be one, one, one line, and then a one. Then I'm going to have negative 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0, and 0. And then I have 0, 0.1, negative 0.2, and 0. Okay, so when I'm doing this, I'm pivoting around the top left corner. So I, that's why I wanted to put this first um, equation at the top, so that I have a 1 right away. Okay, so that means that I want to get rid of the negative 0.1. So I'm going to do row 2 plus 0.1 of row 1. Okay, so I'm not changing row 1. Okay, and I'm also not changing row 3. So I can write those in right away. So row 1, I'm going to do negative, point, uh, negative 0.1 plus 0.1 times 1. So that's going to give me a 0, which is what I wanted. And then it's going to be 0.2 plus 0.1 times 1, so that's plus 0.1, so that's going to be a 0.3. And then I'm going to have 0 plus 0.1 in each of these others, so I'm going to get 0.1 and 0.1. So I'm done pivoting in the um, first column. So I go down and over, and now I want to pivot around this 0.3. So what I can do is just take row 2 and divide it by 0.3. Now here I'm I'm going to switch to fractions because the decimals are not very nice. Okay, so this is going to be a 1. These ones are going to be 1 thirds. Okay, so I'm still pivoting here. I, again, you can use decimals, but you're going to get some rounding mistakes. Um, so at the next step, I want to make the 0.1 into a 0 and also the 1 into a 0. So I'm going to do row 1 minus row 2. Okay, so in this step, I'm not changing row 2. So I can write that in. Oops. Okay, um, so I'm doing row 1 minus row 2. So 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 1 third is 2 thirds. So these are both 2 thirds. And then I want to do row 3 minus 0.1 of row 2. Okay. Now, 0.1 is also 1 over 10. So if you want to use fractions, you can do that instead. So this one's going to be a 0. This one's going to be a 0. And then um, I'm going to have, let me just write this one in. Okay, so I have negative 2 over 10 minus 1 over 10 times 1 over 3. So this is going to be, um, actually, let me just keep going up top here. So I'm, I'm going to be subtracting um, 1 over 30. So I might want to put this over 30, so I need to times by 3. So this is negative 6 over 30 minus... Um, Um, times by 3. Um, so this should be negative 7 over 30. Okay, so that's what should go here. Okay, and then I'm going to have 0 minus 110 times 1 third. So I'm going to have negative 1 over 30 here. Okay. So now I'm done pivoting in column two. So now I want to pivot in this spot here. 
So because I'm using the fractions, I'm going to do this as a fraction. So you could divide by negative 7 over 30. That's the same as multiplying by negative 30 over 7. Okay, so we're not changing row 1 over row 2 here, so I wrote them in. This is going to be 0, 0, 1, and then I'm going to get 1 over 7 here. So I'm still pivoting around this entry. Okay, so I want to make the things above it into zeros. So I'm going to do row 1 minus 2 thirds of row 3. Okay, so I'm not changing row 3 here. Um, so this is going to be a 1, a 0, and a 0. So I just want to do 2 thirds. Um, maybe I can fit it here. So 2 thirds minus 2 thirds times 1 over 7. So that's 2 thirds minus 2 over 21. So I want to put this over 21. So it's 14 over 21 minus 2 over 21. So I get 12 over 21, um, which is going to be 4 over 7 for that entry. And then I'm going to do row 2 minus 1 third of row 3. So now I'm going to have 0, 1, 0. And then for this entry here, I'm going to have 1 third minus 1 third times 1 over 7. So this is 1 third minus 1 over 21, which is 7 over 21 minus 1 over 21. So I get 6 over 21, which is 2 over 7. Okay, so that means that I can now solve my system. So I have x is equal to 4 over 7, y is 2 over 7, and z is 1 over 7. That doesn't look like a 7. Okay, which means that my stationary matrix, um, actually I'm going to move down a bit. So it means that my, so this is our solution. So my stationary matrix S, which was x, y, z, is going to be the matrix 4 over 7, 2 over 7, 1 over 7. Now notice Okay, these things, they sum to 1. Okay, so that's good. That's a good sign, right? Um, and then we want to remember that the order that we chose at the beginning was happy, adequate, and dissatisfied. Okay, so what they were asking at the beginning of this, what is the probability a random customer is dissatisfied? Okay, so that's going to be the entry in the third column. Okay, so the probability okay, in the long run that a customer is dissatisfied is 1 over 7, which is um, 0 0.14 to 9 approximately. Okay, so that would be our answer here. Okay, and if they wanted happy, it would be 4 over 7. Okay, let's try another one. So, suppose every time I'm thirsty, I either grab a glass of juice or a glass of cider. If I have just had a glass of juice, there's a 60% chance I will follow it with another glass of juice. If I have just had a glass of cider, there's an 80% chance I will follow with another glass of cider. Um, now, I've had a lot of drinks today, okay, so so many that I lost count, okay? So we're talking about in the long run, after a lot of stages, what's the probability that the next drink will be a glass of cider? So here we have states, juice, Okay, and cider. So I'm going to use a J and a C here. And we want to start by making our probability, our transition matrix. OK, 
Okay, so we want to pick an order. I don't know, maybe I'm going to go cider juice. Okay, so if I have, so this is telling me, uh, maybe I'll highlight here. So if I had just had a glass of cider, there's an 80% chance I'll follow with another glass of cider. So that tells us cider to cider. So this should be 0.8. Okay, and then the rows add to one. So this part has to be 0.2. Okay, um, if I had just had a glass of juice, there's a 60% chance I have another glass of juice. So that's juice to juice. So that should be 0.6, which means the other entry in that row is 0.4. Okay, now this is, this is a regular, maybe I should write P, okay. So we can say right away, P is a regular matrix. since all entries are positive already. Okay, so that means that this uh, Markov chain is a regular uh, Markov chain. So there is a stationary matrix here that we will approach. Okay, so let's call it S, okay, and it has two entries in it, so it should be a one by two matrix. And we know that it satisfies S times P equals S, because that's what it means to be a stationary matrix. Okay, so if I take my S and I multiply it by P, Okay, I should get S back. So that means if I do this multiplication, that 0.8x plus 0.4y is the first entry, and 0.2x plus 0.6y is the second entry. So those should equal x and y. Okay, so that means that this entry here has to equal x. And this entry here has to equal y. So that gives us two equations. So 0.8x plus 0.4y equals x. And 0.2x plus 0.6y is equal to y. Okay, now remember our method says we can discard one. So let's just get rid of this one. But we need to add x plus y equals 1. So I'm going to, again, switch my x over so that I want to solve um, the system. x plus y equals 1, negative 0.2x plus 0.4y equals to 0. Okay, that's my system. Now, you can solve with substitution. Okay, uh, Gauss-Jordan elimination, um, the regular elimination method. Or you could use inverses. Okay, there's lots of methods that we had in this class. You can use any of them. If it doesn't tell you what method to use, you get to pick your favorite one. Now, just to be different, I'm going to solve this one using uh, matrix inverses. Okay, so this is the method I'm going to use here just to practice it. So the system that we want to solve is equivalent to the matrix equation where the coefficient matrix, okay, looks like that, times my variable column matrix equals the column matrix um, with the constants in it. So this is my A times my X equals my B. Okay, so what we want to do to solve this, so X is going to equal A inverse times B. Okay, so we need to find A inverse. Okay, 
Okay, so because A is a two by two matrix, we could use the formula to find the inverse. Okay, so using formula, okay, we want to find the capital D. So that's going to be 1 times 0.4 minus 1 times negative 0.2. So this is 0.4 plus 0.2, so it's 0.6. Okay, it's not 0. So that means our inverse is 1 over 0.6. So remember, we swap the main diagonal, okay, so the 0.4 and the 1 switch spots, and we negate the others. So they stay in their same spots, but they're now negated. So A inverse should be 0.4 over 0.6. Um, so our inverse should be 0.4 over 0.6, which is 4 over 6, which is 2 over 3. Okay, minus 1 over 0.6, that's going to be minus 10 over 6, um, which I could reduce, actually, to um, 5 over 3. Um, 0.2 over 0.6 is 2 over 6, which is 1 third. And 1 over 0.6 is 10 over 6, or 5 over 3. Uh, so that would be our inverse. Okay. Um, or we can use the Gauss-Jordan method for inverses. You don't have to do both, okay? Um, so then I would take my A matrix and augment with the identity of the same size. So I want to pivot here. So I'm going to do row 2 plus 0.2 of row 1. So row 1 is not going to change. So this is going to be a 0, this is going to be a 0 0.6, a 0 0.2, and a 1. Then I want to pivot around the 0.6. So I'm going to do row 2 divided by 0 0.6, which is going to give me 0, 1, 2, 0 0.2 over 0 0.6 is 1 third. And 1 over 0 0.6 we already said was 5 thirds. And now I just have to do um, row 1 minus row 2, because I'm still pivoting here. Um, so then I'm going to have the identity on this side. Um, this is still 1 third and 5 thirds. Okay, now 1 minus 1 third is 2 thirds. And 0 minus 5 thirds is minus 5 thirds. So again, this tells us the inverse is 2 thirds, negative 5 thirds, 1 third, and 5 thirds, okay, which is the same as the formula that we found. So you can use either method to find the inverse, doesn't matter, okay? And then what we want to do is solve for x. So my x variable is a inverse times b. So that's going to be 2 thirds minus 5 thirds, 1 third and positive 5 thirds times the B column matrix, which is 1, 0. So um, we're going to take this row by this column. That's going to give us the first entry. So that's 2 thirds times 1, which is um, plus negative 5 thirds times 0. Okay, and then we're going to take this row times this column. That's going to give us this entry here. So it's 1 third times 1 plus 5 thirds times 0. So we end up getting 2 thirds and 1 third. Okay, so this is equal to x.
which means that it's equal to xy, which means our solution is x equals two thirds and y equals one third. And then we remember that S was XY as a matrix. So it's two thirds and then one third. And our order that we chose, remember, was C and then J. So what did they actually ask for? Um, what is the probability that the next drink, so in the long run, is gonna be a glass of cider? So we want the probability of C in the long run, which is gonna be two thirds. which is 0 0.6667 approximately.